Hey guys, Terry from Because Play here, um, coming at you with another interview. So today we are actually we our, our presence is graced by um, Dean Rankin, comic book artist, uh, writer, uh, man extraordinaire. Known him for a little while now. Um, fantastic guy, really really uh, fun to to be around and and talk to. And um, his artwork is second to none. So anyway, I'm going to cut across and introduce him right now. So. Dean, good morning. How you doing, buddy? Good morning. I'm I'm doing okay, considering all things, all things pandemic. I'm doing okay. All things pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> all things pan galactical. Yeah, exactly. That's it. <laughs> so, um, all right. Now you are a comic book artist, correct? Yes. Uh, yes, I'm a comic book artist and writer. Do you want to, do you want to hear my credits? I'll go for it. Go next. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, worked on the. Um, the Simpsons, Futurama, um, Hellboy, I Hate Fairyland, um, what else? Uh, Underdog, I've just finished a run on Oggy and the Cockroaches, uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle, um, I've worked on the Beano and the Dandy, um, lots of other stuff. Uh, uh, Invader Zim, Rick and Morty, it's hard to... Uh, oh, know. I love Invader Zim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was Jimbo so Jones. Yeah, and I um I did a creator own comic called Itty Bitty Bunnies in Rainbow Pixie Candy Land, which is about uh, naked drug using bunny rabbits. So that one wasn't. <laughs> oh my god, I have got to, I've got to see that. I yeah, seriously got to see that. <laughs> Something's going to be wrong with that for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It's next level wrong. So malevolent Mr. Burns. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all like all the different um sort of. I did like eight years with um, working for Bongo Comics. So they had lots of one shots and Malevolent and Mr. Burns. Um, they did a one shot of Krusty the Clown, um, Bart Simpson Comics when that was running, and Simpsons Comics. And I did a little bit of Futurama. So, um, so it was lots, lots and lots. So Simpsons was, um, was and is, and I think will be the biggest thing I've ever worked on. Um, there was something, I, I, it's, it was almost like something magic happened when I scored that gig, uh, because it opened all these other doors for me as well. So when you like, so like, for, like I drew comics for 20 years before that, but when, and no one would have heard of anything I'd done, but when you said, when you say, oh, yeah, I worked on Simpsons comics, it has this kind of, um, uh, you know, suddenly people believe that you know what you're doing. Yeah, it's it's got this, it's got the star above your head going. Yeah, Duh. yeah, and so I can, like, and what it means, you know, what it's meant is when I'm like trying to get work at other companies, I can go, well, I've done this, mm -hmm. and I think it will. It may not get you gigs as such, but it will at least um, open doors for you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's it's like anything, I suppose. If you do something grand and and uh, and amazing, you know, it's 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 on your resume then. And so when somebody sees it, they go, oh, you did, oh, oh you you did, come you did, to you me. That. You did that. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, yeah, it was, you know, it was always, yeah, I'll always be really thankful for that. It was um, lucky to score it. Um, <laughs> oh, look, I mean, from what I've seen, you your your work is second to none in that in, in that uh, arena. So, you know, it's, oh, it's right up your alley and it, it just works perfectly for you. Yeah, I have a very sort of like cartoony style. Um, so I could never like draw Batman or, you know, not in a serious way at least, but, um, something like Simpsons was kind of perfect for me. The, um, how I, do you want to hear how I scored it? So the, how I scored it was at like, so about first I should say, I, I started working on it when I was 38. So it was like a really long time before I actually got So to last it. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's like comics have never been like, oh, yeah, I'll just like leave school and suddenly I'll start working on Simpsons. Like it, it took a long time for me to score it. And I was drawing these comics for these um, mag kids' magazines that you buy at the supermarket. Mm. And the work had dried up. So I went to my local supermarket to see what was there and I picked up a Simpsons comic and it all looked like really good. But there was, I was flicking through, there's this one page that I thought, oh, you know, that one's not so great. Like, it was kind of off model. And I, could, I thought, oh, I could just about do it. I could just about 
draw as good as that. Um, so inspired by, you know, people inspired by great art, I was kind of inspired by, well, it was a bit rough, a bit medi- <laughs> you know, mediocrity kind of going. I can do better. <laughs> And so I started sending, uh, at the time you could send, uh, they, there was a submissions email, so you mm-hmm. could actually like, contact them directly. So I started sending work off, by, and by about the second thing I sent off, they started using my work. Uh, but I have to say, if you look back on my old stuff, it was really rough. The, you know, people don't believe it, but <laughs> the first thing I did, I did this like story of um, snake robbing the quickie mart the snake, so yeah, snake robbing the quickie mart, and uh, man, they don't look like the you know, you can see who the, the characters are, but they're really, really off model. So it was just this absolute blessing that I scored it. I don't know how I did it over the years. I've really tried to be more on model, and I have you know, improved a great deal in that area. Um, mm-hmm. and that's been really helpful for me to be able to draw on model. So, like, if you're doing like oh, Rick and Morty, oh, yeah, they look like Rick and Morty in their own model, that's kind of you know one of the things that yeah has sort of really benefited me over the years now yeah i've seen i've seen you know um artists on youtube drawing uh bart simpson you know kind of like the simple way you just do this bit then you do this bit and and so on but it's like you know the the actual model of it would be quite difficult to do oh yeah i've got this like how to draw simpsons book that i work with so like not like bart has nine points on his head and they can't be too pointy and they can't be too wavy and um that's all yeah it's quite technical um so i took a long time they, they i think they're sort of like they're cartoony so you think oh they'll be easy to draw but you can really tell when they're off mm. um so it's, and then it's not just being able to draw the characters it's to be the art you know to be able to um tell stories through the art as well so yeah, so I was really thankful for it. I did a lot of backup stories, mainly two, four pages, but I did some main stories. And um, by the end of, of it, so yeah, Bongo Comics have finished now. Mm-hmm. Um, they finished was it last year? I think it was like 2018. They finished. Um, so that's a bit sad to see that gone. But I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm always holding up the hope that Marvel will pick it up and start to produce <laughs> Disney. Yeah. Disney will pick yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, like a Disney <laughs> artist. That'd be cool. So um, Jess has come in and said, what's the hardest gig you've ever um, had to do? Um, yeah. Um, I guess they're all hard to a point. I always get really anxious before working because I want to do a good job. Um, look, I've recently did a book and that's like 240 pages of illustrations. I had like four weeks to pencil it all. So that's that's hard to appoint just throughput mm-hmm. by, you know, really having to push and keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's always hard then when there's changes and things like that. You kind of you put your heart and soul and, and energy into things and then you get back, oh, yeah, that's not quite right. We'd like that little bit changed. So... Um, I think those kind of gigs are hard, um, but I think I don't know. I think maybe maybe Simpsons. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know what was the hardest thing I've had. You know, you, you have a lot of setbacks and things don't go quite go to plan. So that's always um, that's always difficult. You know, I think you saw Jack Kirby said comics will break your heart, and it's it's true. Like you know, the, <laughs> uh, even like. I, I think, like, you know, I can reel off my successes. I can talk about, oh, I did this and this and this. But if you look at my rejection letters or the things I nearly worked on, on I, you know, or something didn't quite happen, that's a really long list. So I think you become kind of philosophical in the idea of, about success, what success, success actually is, because you know how hard it's been, how hard a road it's been to get there. Yeah, um, I think people I don't, people don't really understand how difficult it is to to land a job of any type and then stick with it and then do it properly and yeah, you know, yeah. go go through the process of it. Um, yeah, you know they, totally they, cool. they they see you at the end of the day as you know oh yep he's you know he's he's the guy that does Simpsons comics he does Futurama he does this he does that, yeah. but uh, you know I guess they don't uh, see the 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 level of rejection the level of um, of you know. Uh, 
the footwork, the last 30 years of, of grinding and, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always say it's, it's like the grind and the hustle. Like when you get to gigs, you have to work, work, work. And then in between gigs, you're hustling to get other work. This is, I always feel like I'm sort of punching above my weight to a point that um, you, you look at these other artists and they're like, they're just like really, really good. And this is, it's going to sound self depreciating, but it's really not that like, I'm, 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 I'm a good artist. I'm, I'm above average when it comes to like, you know, what I'm able to do, but mm -hmm. there's, um, I, I do have limitations to my work that I've, you know, I've been tried to improve over the years, but for me, it's been very much a trying to target my work to the companies that would accept my kind of stuff. You know, I always feel for uh, up and coming comic artists who go, yeah, I want to work for Marvel, I want to work for DC, but you look at their work and you go, I don't like maybe stylistically, it could be really great, but it just doesn't quite fit their model. Yeah, Dark Horse comics maybe or something yeah, else. So yeah, they're trying to find yeah. like the, you know, the, the areas where people, you know, your work would be a good fit. I mm. think that's important as well. Well, I mean, you know, it's it, you're not exactly punching above your weight uh, or, you know, or depreciating yourself in any way. I mean, if anyone who knows, um, you know, you challenge yourself continuously and that's the only way you can actually get better. If you sit there yeah. and ride your laurels, you're never going to get any, get yeah, any. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And also, like, you, you, have to, you have to do the work. I've done, you know, from mm. pages and pages and pages of comics. And oh, like, look, I mean, I'm a cosplay builder, as you know. I build yeah. costumes. And I've got piles and piles of scrap shit foam sitting behind me of bits that didn't work. Didn't work, yeah, yeah. And, like, I'm hardly a sports fan, but I think Michael Jordan talks about, he, there's this great quote about him, like, you know, talking about all the failures, like, all the times that he's missed and, you know, like, all, yep. all the important games that, he, you know, that he didn't win. So, um, yeah, it's kind of that resilience I think for comics is something, you know, if that's the kind of thing that you want to do, you have to be prepared to deal with the knockbacks. And that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. I think, um, I think art's interesting, like, because so much of the creative process is like taking something special inside of you and showing it to the world. Mm. Right. And I think, and then have you seen, are you a Doctor Who fan? Oh, incredible. You know, I can't remember. You know, you know those guys and they they have their brains and they hold it in their hands. Do you know? Do you not remember that episode? The Ood. The Ood, right? The Ood, right? Ood. So I just think being a creative person is kind of like being a nude. Like you, you have something really special to you and you show it to your, the world. <laughs> and the problem is then that can be, like the Ood can be misused and rejected and that, that hurts. Um, um but well, actually, you're right. On, you're right on point there, because you know artists are basically turned into a slave race, just like the dude. The dude. So it's about, but but at the same time, I think sometimes as as creative people, we don't. I, I never feel like I have a choice. Excuse the pun, but I kind of think you know, I have ink running through my veins. I have to, I have to tell stories. I have to make things. It's, it's you know part of part of who I am and um, so and you know and I think some people you know take advantage of that as, as um, of creative people but yeah I guess you know but my thing is like you know we have to be able to deal with those rejections when it doesn't quite work out or our own um, self you know our, you know bagging on ourselves when things don't work out the way we want it to you know oh, you're, you're preaching to the minister there because every yeah, time yeah, i look yeah, at yeah. a costume and uh, that i've made i can pick up the faults i can find out where i screwed up you know in yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's, it'd be yeah. like you going back through the the comics that you've drawn and things like that going oh whoops i'll just yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll just yeah, i'll just hide yeah, that yeah. page yeah, that's right. <laughs> no one else can see it no one else yeah. is no one else even notices but you can see yeah. it every and every time you look at it you're like i should have I just I should have gone yeah. back and fixed that. <laughs> yeah, I can be like you know I can I can like my work for about two weeks I think and that's about the limit and then I can't look at it anymore. The because <laughs> I think really, you know it's all the all the itches, but I do try to. You know, part of it is like you know so often when you're working on deadline as well, like you've done a page and you're oh this could be better, 
but you've got, got to get up, got to draw the other page now. I have to keep moving and you know not be too um, perfectionist. I mean, and, do, you, do you ever get artist artist block where you just kind of stall out and you just, just uh, no, go and mow the lawn or something? Well, not on a, not on a deadline. <laughs> not like depends. Like so, I I always consider myself to be more of a. Uh, this guy's going to be stupid. More of a, a mechanic than an, than an artist. You know the idea of, oh, I have to wait for inspiration to hit. When when my inspiration hits, then I'll then I'll make the masterpiece. For me, it's very much like okay, well, when I've got work to do, I I get up, I turn the computer on, I start drawing. You know that mm-hmm. I need to start just breaking it down. If I'm feeling overwhelmed, I try to remind myself that it's all just um, circles and cylinders, you know, you know, okay, just yep. break all the basic shapes, just circles and cylinders, break it down. Um, I have a bit of a mantra, don't think, draw, that, you know, because I can get into my own head a little bit. And if I just, just draw it, just draw it, don't think too much about it, even though you're making a thousands of little decisions. Um, yeah, you just have to keep going. But like some, some, this, I'm sorry, there was some quote. I, I, I don't know who it was from. Some famous artist talking, but they put it up. You know, don't cry, or you know, you know, even if you cry, like, don't cry, make art, or something like that. It is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, think, but, actually, uh, I vaguely remember something. It was, it was, you know, blah blah blah, make art. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I shouldn't, I shouldn't quote things. I don't really know what the, you know, the quote oh look, is, no, but... well, welcome to the stream and have a nice. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. But it's something, <laughs> it's something like that. Um, so, so yeah, I, I do tend to just like just keep going. Um, right now, I think is you know exceptional circumstances. Um, so I think that's a little bit different. But when I've got work on, I'll just like just you know just work it. I guess you know, with with the uh, onset of our uh, lockdown and um, and good old COVID nineteen causing uh, society to collapse mm. around, what mm. I guess what we've got to do now is just uh, pitch in and start creating and and start moving forward on new stuff, um, so that when it does come all back together, we can mm. just go, look what I made when I was locked up. <laughs> it is interesting. I'm, I'm going to respectfully disagree. Ready? Okay. okay. No, 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 no. Please do. Please do. <laughs> because I've seen a lot of people. Um, because I get on Facebook and stuff like that, I have a lot of um, sort of artist friends who are going, you know, you know, creativity doesn't stop and all this. And I think there's been a, a different responses from people. And for me, that um, I don't feel like drawing now at the moment. I, um, I, you know, I might, I have done a little bit, I've done a little bit of writing, I've done a little bit of drawing, but it's not like I'm, I'm not writing my King Lear. I'm not. You know, right now it's kind of like um, I just want to I allow myself to be able to go. You know, for me, I think maybe because of how I work, because I do tend to work um, on, on a deadline. I work for companies, and I don't have any work at the moment. So mm-hmm. it's suddenly like uh, I don't really feel like drawing for fun, and I don't tend to draw for fun. Well, yeah, that's that's. I guess that's the difference. Is uh, you know, some people like, for instance, you know, they play play guitar, or um, you know, or they they do, I don't know, they 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 do creative stuff. They they yeah. paint pictures or anything like that. But a lot of the times they do it as a hobby or they do it for fun. But they don't do it as a business. Yeah, yeah. So for me, yeah. So that's it. I just I yeah. I'm I'm not sure if it's not pure. I, I feel like I feel bad because like, Oh I no, think, no, don't, don't think that it's, no, a pure, no, but, it's, know, it's not like, a pure it and art thing. In any yeah. Way, yeah. I, yeah I, I feel like I oh, should I just be drawing for drawing sake because of the joy of the pencil being on the paper. And maybe, no, well, maybe. I mean... but, but, but I think right now I don't want to. And I think right now I, I'm trying to give myself, um, just, you know, just a break, you know, I don't, you know, I, you know, you don't win, you know, you don't win quarantine, you know. It's not like you're going to go, oh well, you know, you know, did this, you know, I, you know. <laughs> I, I kind of think if you know, just do whatever you do to get by, you know. And if it is to create, if it is going, oh my god, this is, I have this rush of creativity. This is how I want to spend my time. This is what I want to do. Uh, I think yeah, yeah, go for it. Just like, but for yeah, but I'm not sure if everybody works that way. 
And no, I think that a very small <laughs> amount of people will actually get a re get revelation from being locked up in a small room. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, right now my my big issue is oh shit, I better go to the supermarket later on, and I don't want to go to to deal with that. But oh, um, I did that yesterday. Oh yeah. dear. Yeah. Uh, Woolies has X's marked on the floor, one point five meters apart. The pharmacy actually had barricades in front of the mm -hmm. um, all all the the counters and registers and everything and um and they were you know pretty much forcing people to be you know it's like you stand here you stand over there you stand here I think, I, I think it's really interesting i think that um i'm i'm interested to to see what things will what will what will stay in place post the pandemic you know post apocalypse yeah 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 i think yes yeah, so i think you know i think you know i i, I I have, you know, I have hope that things will get better and we'll be, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get through this. But some things I think won't su survive it. Um, not, not necessarily talking about people specifically, but um, some some things that we've taken for granted about how we operate will change. And I think also we'll all change us as people. I don't know exactly how it will change us as people, but I mean, we'll come on, really... We've... We've been we've been uh, dancing around for the last twenty years on on TV and movies and things like that around dystopian futures, and uh, I mean just take a look at Blade Runner, good old Blade Runner back in back in the day. I mean that environment of you know the the undercity style, um, you know. Every, I think I think we're kind of heading that way in a fashion, not not to the the Mad Max, um, you know, post apocalyptic nightmare. But um, I think we're actually heading towards a, a unique environment in society mm. where we're going to be uh, more afraid of each other. And yeah, yeah, and well, yeah, that's right. And so I think that's yeah. So it's going to be interesting. And I think I think I'm I'm, I'm sure everybody else is grieving, but I think I'm grieving um, the loss of all kinds of things that I didn't realize would be affected and. Um, you know, things that, of you know, the things I love and the, you know, because it's not going to be the same post pandemic. So, yeah, so it's, you know, it's interesting times. I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but I think it's, um, oh, no, 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 look, we're right now we're in doom and gloom. I mean, you know, this, yeah, is, yeah, this, yeah. this, this, this is the nature of it. Yeah. I mean, you can't sit there and close the closet door cause you don't want to see the mess. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. But yeah, I'm trying to, you know, just, you know, just to get by, I'm trying to be reasonably, not 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 Pollyanna, but reasonably positive that okay, this we will get through this, um, but just keenly aware that things are going to change. Oh, look, we're going to come out the other side. There's going to be different different businesses doing different things, with yeah. different regulations. Um, you know, like for instance, you know, borders are closed right now. Um, uh, you know, who knows? We may even move into some uh, pre-war. Uh, requiring papers to travel <laughs> to travel anywhere. And yeah, you know, and I think you know, and also I don't think it's necessarily to, to a point. I don't think it's necessarily like going to be completely over. I would imagine there would be times when, um, like there will be I don't know pandemic warnings for certain areas, and what will happen is that area will need to shut down. You know that kind of. Yeah, I mean, for the next few years, we're going to be stuck with that uh, continuously happening. We're, we're going yeah. to get reemergence of of the virus uh, in certain areas. In, in, yeah, and that, and that, like you know, so I think in some ways, you know, there would have to be more, like, yeah, just sit, more systems put in place that um, would have to, um, yeah, you know, when when the virus emerges again. I'm hardly uh, an expert, but. That's, that's my theory as a as a comic book artist and writer. <laughs> I'm trying to stay uh, stay abreast of the whole matter as much as I can because uh, there's so much misinformation out there now. Um, you know, it's it's from from start to finish. You know, there's no way to figure out what's what and who's who in the zoo. Mm. So, but look, at the end of the day, as long as there's food on the table, there's a bed to sleep in, and uh, you know, and you're not under threat of of death, uh, I think mm. it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Life will go on. Yeah. So you know how it changes is how it's going to change. Um, I mean, my my lovely wife is uh, very much one of those type of people that uh, abhors change, 
cannot mm. stand it. She mm. she will move away from it as much as possible. Yeah, um, I'm not a fan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, you're not a fan. I know no. that. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> you know, uh, I don't embrace change. Yeah. But I wouldn't mind some change here and there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So some of us obviously are now jobless, and um, mm. you know, and you know, we're going to have to go and uh, sit on the on the food line for a while. Um, mm. Other of us are lucky enough to have been able to pick up something along the way. Mm. Now, you know, um, one of the positives, I guess, is the fact that we've got um, a lot of new jobs that have just popped up in like call centers and deliveries and yeah, so, yeah. and mm. all these different and security, et cetera. I mean, there are, mm. um, you know, probably 100,000 jobs have popped up overnight. Mm. And um, so we just have to make a, a little bit of a shift and move into something different. And something different, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah. reminds me of uh, Sound of Music and uh, <laughs> the good old uh, Julie Andrews movie, uh, mm. you know, where they had the Nazis and the, the yeah, and they were conscripting the young kids and all that sort of stuff. So I, mm. I think what we're not going to move into a Nazi style thing, but we're definitely going to move into a, a more dysto- soft level dystopian. Soft, soft, level dystopian. <laughs> <laughs> soft and squishy dystopian. Yeah, 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 yeah. But all right, let's 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 move on to um, conventions. More depression. <laughs> while, yeah, so, while we're yeah. surfing down the hill on depression, let's let's yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I saw you at the uh, you know the latest supernova in Gold Coast, and that was kind of the last one that was that was on. We sort of squeezed in just before the um, the rules came in place. Um, oh, about no, I got the... a photo with you. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that was um that was a that was an interesting. That was I I don't know. I felt like. It was a, it was really nice to do a con because I love conventions, um, but I kind of I was sad at the time because I kind of thought, oh yeah, this is, this could be the end for some time, a significant kind of time. And I do like, so I do miss the conventions. Like I think I, I did eighteen conventions last year, and I think well I get I got two in this year, and that'll be that you know that may well be it. Um, I got an email recently. I know some people are there looking at trying to do um, virtual conventions. I think that's an interesting. <laughs> I even idea. suggested something similar to that. There's like, yeah, 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 a few people suggested it to me. I'm like, oh, that could be a good idea. Yeah. And then uh, started rolling out the idea of it. I thought, oh, our internet's probably under enough strain as it is now, and we want to have yeah. a virtual con. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's interesting. So, you know, I guess I mean I'm chalking up the conventions to. One of the other things that I love that's being affected by the pandemic, um, I know, and and I was speaking to you before about like comic book shops, um, because Diamond. Oh, yeah, let's the, let's go into Di- comic book shops for a second. Yeah, yeah. So Diamond, the main distributor, has recently announced that they're um, um, not going to be shipping new content from this week, and so your local comic book shop is in. Kind of serious trouble. So, if you're um, if you like comics and you're like you know comic books, you know maybe you know get onto your comic book shop and order something, anything um, from them to try to help them get through this difficult time because it might be you know I don't know how many weeks is going to be uh, shut down for, but you may not get be able to get the latest say Spider Man, but there's certainly lots of trades and things like that you could pick up. So. Yeah, I'd encourage your listeners to um, get down to the comic book store, or if they, you know, obviously if they can't get down, give them a buzz, contact them online to see what things they could um, send to you. Well, yeah, and I, you know, unfortunately, I'm I'm going to have to pipe it in so that they're going to have to put a delay on their shipping, in that sense, because uh, I believe it stays on paper and cardboard for about uh, forty eight hours. Oh, is that right? Okay, so, yeah. So, yeah. um, you know, obviously that, uh, you know, if they include that in, then people are going to be a lot calmer about ordering online. Yeah, yeah, so, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe I'll, hopefully they'll take that into account. I hope so, because um, mm. it's, you know, well, I, don't, I mean, I don't necessarily go to comic book shops, but I know a friend of mine, um, Doug Ma, he's uh, actually a big comic fan and mm. collector, and... Um, yeah, he's been complaining over the last oh, you know, year or so about how cons... Um, are lacking in comic book stores. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think it's interesting. I think even though Comic Con is in the, you know, the, the name, you know, they stem from comic books. They've conventions have changed 
you know, over, you know, over, you know, over the years mm. and um, with focuses on different areas, you know. So I always think that conventions have been really, you, there's, it's not really one convention. It's like lots of conventions are really happening at the one time. You know, people are coming for cosplay or they're coming for comics or they're coming to see, you know, the, the authors or the TV movie guests. Or that the big one these days is esports. So again, sorry? Esports. Yeah, exactly right. So, you know, so you do like, it's very, um, yeah, it's, it's almost like a misnomer to suggest there's one convention or, you know, oh, it should be like this. Well, no, it's not like that. You know, I think the benefit of, uh, is you know it's not so niche anymore. Like you know, lots of people go, oh, you know, you know, Oz Comic Con is on, or Super Supernova is on, or you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is. I, you know, we always love to go as a family. They may not have even read a comic. They just might be Game of Thrones fans or something like that. So, I, 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 I like that. That it's a, um, it's yeah. I think um, if you're just think it's going to be about comics then you'll you know you've got to be sad because yeah because conventions haven't been like that for a long time they haven't been like that for a very long time yeah but uh, look i mean you know conventions can be a lot of fun and i think um yeah coming out of this uh, into my soft core dystopian (laughs) um i believe that conventions are going to make a bit of a shift as well Mm. so they're probably going to be more smaller carnival level I guess. Um, so maybe, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. How, I, I can't, yeah, I, I, I'm not quite, can't quite see how it's going to be on the other end. But um, but there, there have been sort of smaller conventions popping up in regional areas. And I think that's really positive as well. Um, hopefully, you know, sort of post-pandemic, we'll be able to get those up and running, running again. Um, I, I just remember my first conventions like years ago. It was like Supernova Sydney. I'd flown up for the day and I walked in and I thought, oh, these are my people. Like, <laughs> I it was really, like, I'd been, I'd grown up in a small beach town and no one was in a comic. So it was like, you know, it was like the classic geeky kid uh, who grew up to be a geeky man. And the, and, but to know that you're not alone in that, I that like there's other people who are doing that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the conventions for me were, were was a big part of that. Um, to be you know that you're not, I'm not abnormal, or if I am, there's other people who are abnormal as well because other people are really into. Oh, drawing there's stuff. there's more abnormal and uh, and nerdy and geeky people than what there are supposed normal people yeah exactly right yeah 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 i think you know you scratch the service you you know service with anybody you find i don't know some people don't quite understand it but uh, other people go oh yeah well you know i collect this or you know i read you know i read phantom comic for you know all these years or you know something like that you're gonna geek in everybody yeah (laughs) yeah, sooner or later i think so too so okay what's what's on your laundry list for for the future obviously you know we've been talking about doom and gloom and bits and pieces but you know in on your on your supposed laundry wish list yeah um, which i'm not doing which i'm not doing anything of so i should really point that out i'm not doing anything i like i was playing um lego marvel superheroes with my son yesterday all day so there's nothing else i'm not drawing anything um I was however playing, I, was, I was playing warhammer inquisition martyr yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. So, so on the on the list, the things in the near future are so I'm I'm drawing a a, a book series with um, so Magda Zabanski, the actor, has written a number of young reader books. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called a Timmy the Ticked Off Pony. Um, oh, I should get a copy. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, <laughs> Timmy the Ticked Off Pony. Look at the Ticked Off Pony. Let me see. Oh, that. So Timmy the Ticked Off Pony by Magda Zabanski. Um, this is book one, and this will be coming out um, the first of April. And you know, assuming that bookshops are still there, and I've just fin- basically finished drawing a book two, mm-hmm. and then there will be a third book coming out in the near future. So look out for Timmy the Ticked Off Pony, and the the first one's called and the uh, Timmy the Ticked Off Pony and the Pooh of Excitement. 
<laughs> oh, uh, oh my god! So there's so lots of food and all that, so you can imagine. Um, so that's you know that's right up my alley. Uh, so that's um, that's on the agenda. Book three, I'll be starting to work on when it's written. Um, I'm working with um, on a thing at the moment. I don't, it's a kind of really sort of embryonic stage. It's called Upbeat Geek, but it's a card. There, there, there's a pack of cards for that are kind of maybe like sort of therapy cards, like for people who are who are geeks or you know they might be suffering from anxiety or depression or just you know. So it's kind mm-hmm. of funny. You can flip through the card and you go. It's like a maybe like an activity that you can do that day. Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, trying to get them out of their shell a little bit. Yeah, look, it might be, you know, like, you know, uh, yeah, sort of, um, it might be some breathing exercises or it might be some, um, you know, just getting out and connecting with community, that type of thing. And uh, that's, um, um, so we're looking for a publisher for that at the moment. Um, I've, got, I've, got, I've got an idea for you that you can work on if you want. Yeah. yeah. Socially awkward prompt cards. Because ah, ah, it's good. It's good for the people with anxiety and uh, mm, and you know that. and they're they're you know they have very little, very low or, or little or none social skills. Yeah, yeah. Um, they can quite easily just you know sort through the cards and hold it up to somebody. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. Hi. 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 Yeah. How are you? How are you? What have you been up to? And yeah, without no, having to speak a word. <laughs> yeah, I think I need that now. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, you know, that's that's one thing we've talked about in the past is um, is the fact that you know a lot of people are socially awkward or um, or have anxiety issues or you know yeah. um, and and you know you're one of those people that does have issues with people in crowds and does have mm-hmm. issue with um, I suppose you know social interaction etc. Uh, we sort of uh, yeah. hit it off straight away, but because we were standing yeah, across yeah. from each other. <laughs> yeah. I always think that sometimes at the conventions, I swear to God, I always feel that it's actually better, feels safer on my side of the table than where all the crowds are on the other side of the table. <laughs> they, um, it's like I don't know. I set it up how I want it. I know where I'm drawing. It's all it's all right. And then yeah, then I, I feel much more relaxed when I'm all set up and ready to go. The um, and I'm really conscious of, you know, when, you, when you're going up to a table at a convention or you want to meet someone or they're a writer or a comic artist or whatever, um, I always feel really nervous. Go, oh, well, you know, am I going to come off like a dickhead? What will I say? It's going to be really embarrassing. So I'm, I try to be aware of that when people come to my table. If they're feeling kind of awkward or unsure of themselves, I really want them to feel welcome that, you know, that it's, you know, I'm an okay person. I'm not going to, you know, you can um, you know, judge them and, you know, you can come and have a chat to me at a convention. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, I suppose I got, I gave up on trying to, you know, to figure out whether or not I was going to come across as a complete nerd geek um, mm. stalker, whatever the case is, I just walk up and go, hi, this is me, yeah, <laughs> and just yeah. lay it all out there. But, you know, I can understand where you're coming from on that because a lot of people are like that where they won't, you know, they'll, they'll overthink the entire interaction to a point where they just will not step up because it's like, mm. oh, too much trouble. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, yeah, beforehand I, I often worry. And then the sort of social interactions I do this kind of um, post um, uh, analysis Yep, the analytics, oh, the, the, the full-on analytics and and uh, and <laughs> psych. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I said that. what did I think when I did this? And what did, you know that kind of thing. And I, and I try not to do that. You know, I, so um, particularly particularly after a convention, I'm kind of um, exhausted, but um, sort of wired at the same time. I'm kind of this this, this kind of weird balance. So. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I, I try not to now, like just, you know, obviously some things get in your head, but I try not to kind of um, let it um, sort of permeate through my brain too much because it does my head in. So. Well, exactly. I mean, you run around in your own head. I mean, my wife is the same. She does the exact same thing. Uh, you know, it's a, it's that socially awkward environment. Um, yeah, I yeah. I just think, uh, particularly convention, because I'm like I'm drawing, and I'm like people coming to my table, and you're trying to concentrate on one thing, and then you know you've got all this stuff going on. 
sounds buzzing around. So I always feel like I'm being rude to everybody. And I, and I don't think I am. And I'm really trying not to be, but sometimes um, I'm conscious that, you know, I'm not giving the right amount of time to people or the right amount of attention um, to, the, to the people who like, and taking the time to come up to my table. So it's something I'm aware of. I try, you know, I, 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 I try to communicate well and be respectful and nice to people when I do come to the table, but also not be too hard on myself when, um, when I don't feel like I'll quite hit the mark, you know, but that's with, you know, I don't know it's everything. Oh, look, you have good days, you have bad days. It's yeah, 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 yeah. It. And you can't, you can't crucify yourself for, you know, for things that you might, you know, could have shot a water. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you know, that's right. That's right. You know, so you go, you know, you, look, you just do the best you can. And at the, you know, at the, you know, at the end of the day, I think my, you know, my epitaph, epitaph, is it the word? Yeah, yep, on your team. There would be like, you know, I don't know, he, he you know, wasn't bad. He did his best. He tried. <laughs> you know? Here lies, here lies Dean Rankin. He tried. <laughs> He tried. <laughs> and, you know, he shared too many cat memes, and but he tried. <laughs> oh, yeah, cat memes. Oh, my God, I get so many cat memes from you. It's not funny. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's well, right. I'll pass them straight on to my wife, who, who loves every minute of it. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll... So, a bit of a crazy cat uh, person, I gather? Oh, yeah, look, I think um, it's, yeah, you know, well, I do have a couple of cats um, who, you know, who I love, but it's not, sometimes I think it's just about the, you know, even even pre-pandemic, you know, the, you know, the world's not, you know, I don't consider, you know, it's not particularly a nice place, and it's nice to, I don't know, like, you know, I think cat means, are, you know, cat videos are a, a nice way to cheer people up. You know, if you you can certainly, particularly now, but even before, you could scroll through social media and it was all sort of doom and gloom. It's kind of nice to have, I don't know, something just nice. Yeah, it's like doom, 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 gloom, doom, gloom, doom, gloom. Cat mean. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... So, all right. Um, now, what have we got left to cover? Um, I suppose we've we've gone through a little bit of futuristic stuff. You know what you've got mm. on your plate, etc. Um, yeah. Do you miss anyone from the cons and stuff like that? As in, like you know, have you have you got any like a, a major circle of friends or anything like that that you yeah. you can? Oh with? yeah, yeah. So particularly the sort of the, the comic artists, the the. the you know, there's like you know the the, the, the comic guests and stuff like that. You'll you'll see at most conventions, and um, so that's going to be kind of sad, not seeing them. We'd often go out for a drink and stuff like that after the convention, and so I miss that. I'll I'll miss people coming up to the table and saying hi, you know. So yeah, there's there's all there's I think there's yeah, you know, the the con organisers, the volunteers. So many people who are going, you know, like, you know, I love these people, and it's going to be sad to not see them around as much, you know. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's going to be tough. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, what we might do is wrap it up there because, um, unless you've got something else to add or anything, no, no, I've got nothing to plug, I'm not doing anything. Well, you know, look do you have a specific here. Facebook page? I don't even I, know. I, I don't have an art page, I just have me, but yeah, being <laughs> like just. Um, just, just so yeah, anyway, if you, uh, if you like cat memes, you know, if you like cat memes, jump on Dean's page. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, all right, well, thank you so much for spending some time with us um, today Cheers, and sorry. talking about everything. And um, we'll look forward to seeing what you come up with in the future. Cheers, um, see you. because I really, really want to see you actually do some more stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> so, all right, um, now what we're going to do is just uh. There we go. Okay, guys. Well, that was Dean Rankin. Um, he was good enough to... And I've got a fly flying around. Um, he was good enough to actually come on the stream with us uh, today and have a bit of a chat. So if you want to reach out to Dean, please do. Um, he'd probably love to hear from you. Uh, so you can do that on Facebook or I think he's got an Instagram. I'm not sure. Nope, he's, he's, he's turning up his nose at an Instagram. <laughs> So just hit him up on Facebook, uh, send him a private message. He'd probably love to hear from you. Uh, on that note, thanks very, very much for, for listening today and, uh, and watching. And we'll see you again soon.